here is the deal. We all know that black holes are one of the most mysterious and dangerous objects out there. They are literally the extreme when it comes to space-time curvature, they are fascinating, and if you approach one, it will most probably shred you into pieces with its immense tidal forces. But what if we could tame a black hole? Like, explosions are dangerous too, but when they happen, let's say, in an engine, they can be quite useful, right? So is there a way that we can possibly use black holes to our advantage in some distant future? Future. Well, let's figure this out. I thought we should start with the types of black holes out there. Now we mainly see two of them. Either stellar mass black holes, which are a result of a collapse of a massive star, or supermassive black holes, that live in the hearts of big galaxies. Somewhere in between there are also intermediate-sized black holes, but there is a lot of uncertainty about them at the moment. Anyway, all of them are most probably too big to be used by civilization, meaning we need to find smaller black holes. At the moment, there are two main possibilities to get those. There might be primordial black holes that were formed very early when the universe was already dense, and if the original sizes were just right, they might have masses of asteroids or planets right now. However, we still haven't seen one, and their existence is still one of the biggest unanswered questions for astronomy. An alternative to a primordial black hole is something called a Kugelblitz, which is an artificial black hole. Supposedly, if you concentrate enough energy in a small enough space, for example with lasers, a small black hole can form. Both those types of black holes are purely hypothetical at the moment, but technically our current understanding of physics doesn't prevent any of them to exist. So if at some point in future we can possibly put our hands on one of them, what can we possibly use them for? The first and probably most logical thing would be to use them as an energy source. We now think that every black hole should evaporate, emitting what we call Hawking radiation. And there is an inverse proportion between the black hole's size and the energy it's emitting. Meaning the smaller the black hole becomes as it evaporates, the more power you should be getting from it. Of course, it's not a perpetual motion machine. It's not going to give you energy from nothing. In fact, to create a Google Blitz, first you need to spend an enormous amount of energy to create it, and then you'll be getting the exact same amount back as it evaporates. However, theoretically, once you create a black hole, you can then feed it with material like asteroids or comets, and the black hole will eat them first and then return the equivalent of their mass in Hawking radiation. So technically, a small black hole can be like an extremely powerful space battery that you can also recharge by putting some matter into it. It's actually quite convenient as it takes up a small amount of space, meaning you can surround it and extract all the energy it's outputting in all directions. It's like a miniature Dyson sphere, if you like. And there can be a number of possible applications. They can be used as power stations in various parts of the solar system, especially in those parts where there's not much energy from the sun, or you can use them in interstellar travel as propulsion system and energy sources. Of course, there will be multiple challenges associated with such activities, but they should be manageable, especially when we all already have the technology to create black holes and control them. Another way we can make use of a black hole is not for its energy output, but for its gravity. There is a concept called gravitational lensing. When there is a massive object between the observer and the object being observed, the mass in between acts as a lens. We can see that all the time, like in this recent image from James Webb. Here, a massive galaxy cluster bends the light coming from distant galaxies, stretching them and at the same time amplifying their light. Basically, it's like another telescope lens in the way. With the help of gravitational lensing, we can literally see further and better, but the obvious problem is that we have no control over it. We can only see objects that happen to be perfectly aligned. And one of the projects that is trying to solve this problem is currently going through NASA's Advanced Innovation Program. It suggests using a Sun as a massive gravitational lens by sending small telescopes to about 500 astronomical units away from it. But despite the fact that Sun is quite massive, it's also bright, which will interfere with the observations. So even though it will work, it's not perfect for the application. Whereas a black hole will be if you have one in your disposal nearby and if you can control it. It is much smaller in size, meaning it's much easier to get a focus from it either by moving the black hole itself or by moving the detector. It doesn't really matter. The point is that you can potentially use a small black hole within the solar system as a very powerful gravitational lens that would revolutionize space observations. It's literally like a very powerful lens that you can add to your existing optical systems, so having a black hole in your disposal can literally be a new window to the universe for us. There is also another way we can use a black hole, however, hopefully it will never be required. A relatively small black hole can potentially make it really good weapon in an interstellar battle. You can actually fine-tune its size so it will emit very little radiation but still be damaged.
damaging enough. This way it's almost impossible to notice it coming if it's launched at you. The only real way to detect it would be through micro lensing. However, one might argue that it's a bit meaningless. If we are fighting against someone with similar technology, it means they should also be able to manipulate black holes, meaning that if we launch one at them, they will be able to catch it. And if they do, they can use it as an energy source by itself, or even if they just extract the kinetic energy of its movement, it'd still be a free gift of energy to them. So despite them being very stealthy cosmic projectiles, it might not be the smartest idea to throw black holes at one another. Instead, let's use them for more peaceful purposes. So as you can see, black holes aren't just scary monsters that devour and spaghettify everything that comes too close. They can be of a good use at some point in the future. And if you have any other ideas how we can use a black hole that I missed, well let me know in the comments. If you like what we do, subscribe for more content like that, leave this video a thumbs up and support us on Patreon. But most importantly, stay curious my friends.